Hi guys, I just wanted to pop in and let you all know that we are doing a live show with Moment House on August 18th. If you want to get tickets, go to momenthouse.com slash THT. The show is going to be 8 p.m. Central Time, but if you buy a ticket with Moment House, you can watch the show whenever you want for up to a week after. There are live in-person tickets for the show too if you happen to be in Minneapolis, Minnesota, but if not, the virtual show is going to be just as great. So be sure to get your tickets early as there is early bird pricing. So come join us. Go to momenthouse.com slash THD to get your tickets. I want to start off by thanking you for letting us be green with you today. Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm honored that you guys would, uh, would, would be green, man. It's, uh, <laughs> so how, does it, how does it feel to be geckos? <sighs> like, just I feel complete. Yeah. A bucket list item got checked off. I feel, yeah, I feel, you know, lost. Lost? Why do you feel lost? I just feel like I'm just having an experience I've never had before. And it's quite warm. Are you not, <laughs> do you, how, t- how often do you have new life experiences at this point in your, in your life? I guess if we go ultra sp- specific, maybe once a week. Once a week you try something new? Yeah, like I take a different route to get here. Okay. So you, are you, <laughs> are you adverse to change? I think in some ways, maybe. I think everyone is a little bit, but mm-hmm. I'm also not afraid of change. Mm-hmm. I think change excites me. I think that's why I'm in the career I am, just because it feels like every day is so different and it's so unpredictable. And you don't know if tomorrow you're going to be bankrupt or have a number one song. Mm-hmm. So yeah, change is good. And so then that like uh, the stress of that, does that keep you going? I think so. Do you still have a lot of, uh, is there a lot of messages in your music? Are you trying to say stuff? I mean, sometimes, but more we're trying to write the song that the artist is trying to write. Oh, okay. So, so you're, to, are you like, you're a producer? Writer, producer, yeah. Okay, cool, yeah, yeah. cool, cool. So you write songs for other people? Yeah, we like help them figure out what song they want to write. Does any part of you wish that you were the, like the guy? I mean, we do have our own artist project too. So we definitely uh, take that role sometimes. But it's not like the weekend walks in and I'm like, well, I mean, anyone would want to be the weekend, huh? I don't know if being the weekend, would you want to be the weekend? I don't know. I think it'd be cool for about a like a month. I'm sure that we're not keyed into, like, there's probably a lot of things about being the weekend <laughs> that sucks sure. that we're just not keyed into. For sure. Justin, I feel like I just listened to you. You got like therapy geckoed just now. Oh no, I felt it. Did I you felt feel it? For it? Sure. I yeah. felt like I felt this mojo. I'm like, and this is why he's called the therapy gecko. You yes. were just like these like little questions. You're just pulling it out of him. I'm like, yeah. It was like therapy. Yeah. You, you know what's funny is like just in my sort of day to day life, I'll just be like talking with someone, and they'll be like, "You're are you doing therapy gecko yeah, on right? me right now? <laughs> are you doing the and thing?" I'm like, this is just how I talk. I'm a little bit yeah. invasive. I like naturally. It. I like it. Hi, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Two Hot Takes. I'm your host, Morgan. I'm Justin. And I'm a gecko. Well, I guess we're all geckos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lyle. This is Lyle, otherwise known as the therapy gecko. I've been stalking Lyle on TikTok for quite some time now. It's been It's been a while. It's been a while. But Lyle gets these callers, and they're just going through some stuff. One girl, one one that really sticks with me, and it fits the vibe of this show because we do come across it, but she found out she was dating her, like, brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one was bad. But Oh, wow. Lyle gets crazy call-ins and then just, you know, he likes to talk people through it. Like you just heard with Justin, he, he therapies them. How, uh, maybe this is a, a tangent, but how often do you think the people on your show, these stories, are lying you wonder. You do wonder. I think a lot of them are true, though. I really believe like these people are being pretty honest because mm-hmm. I I've, know the stuff that's gone down in my family. No, right. I and feel like, like if some of these are fake, these people would be script writers. Mm-hmm. They would be writing shows and movies because, I mean, it's cliche, but some of the stuff you truly can't make up. Like, yeah. It just is so bizarre and just I agree. so complex. Yeah. I agree. I get I get a, that question uh, about my callers a lot too. Like, yeah. are they fake? And I, I'm i I'm with you guys. I think most of these are real. But even if, the, here's another thing, even if they're not real, we experience them as real. Yeah. We mm-hmm. take them as, at face value. And exactly. so whether, you know, whether or not they happened, it's irrelevant to our discussion of them. True. Exactly. You're going to fit right in here. I'm stoked. They're going to love you. 
Okay, let's dive in. Okay. Am I the asshole for going off on my husband and his mom for taking slash keeping my used pregnancy test? I, female 27, found out that I was pregnant recently. My husband, male 34, and his family are beyond happy and excited. From what I heard, my husband was married two times before, but couldn't have kids for 10 years. This is obviously a huge deal for his family because his mom will be a first-time grandma with this baby. They threw a celebration dinner for us, and as his mom and I were talking about the baby, she told me about how she has already started, quote, making memories by saving keepsakes of her grandbaby. I felt a bit confused and asked if my husband bought something for the baby and then gave it to her. She said no, but he did bring her my used pregnancy test and gave it to her to store as a memory of the news of her grandbaby's existence. I was floored. I looked at my husband like, did I? Did you really do that? And he nodded while smiling. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I felt creeped out, disgusted, and very uncomfortable. After the initial shock, I just went off on both of them, calling what they did creepy and disgusting and highly violating. My husband argued that it was not a huge deal. He just grabbed the test once I got rid of it, put it in a plastic bag, and gifted it to his mom as a keepsake. I told him it made me feel violated and creeped out because the test had my literal pee on it. His mom said something about taking care of the smell, and I lashed out even more and demanded they get rid of it, but they kept arguing, calling me controlling. Brother-in-law asked me to calm down, but I decided to just grab stuff and go home. My husband started arguing about how all of this was just an overreaction and said that I ruined his and his family's joy by how I behaved after finding out about the pregnancy test. He said for him and his mom, it's all about the baby, but I somehow made the whole thing about me and hurt their feelings in the process. But that was my literal pee on that test, and I just couldn't help flip out even if it ruined their joy for the news. Did I overreact? Can I I ask you guys a a macro question that I feel like is is relevant to like, just like what you guys do on here in general? Yeah. Do you guys, how important are intentions in people's actions when, when you're judging them? I do take it into consideration, but someone can have the best intentions and still come across like a huge asshole. So I just take it story by story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I just pretend like my friend is telling me this story that just happened to them and how I would naturally react. Mm. And so it's just kind of like, sometimes it's like, wait, what? You did what? Yeah. Or like, you know, just how you chat with your friend. I don't know. What do you guys think on this one? No way. No way. If you took my pee stick and gave it to your mom, that'd be so weird. So that's where I'm curious. Is the is there the issue here? Is it does it lie within the fact of keeping the the test or the gifting of the test? Because I don't I bet you there's a good amount of people that keep that thing. I one hundred percent. I think it's cute if you personally keep the stick you peed on. But to give it to your mom? Yeah, this is an invasion yeah. of, of privacy for yeah. sure. Yeah, he should have asked. Yeah. I, it's that the reason I bring up the intention thing is because you know she was. She said her husband was like smiling at her. So like in yeah. his in he his mind, proud. right? He's like, oh, th- I'm doing like a cute gesture. She's gonna love this, and I, and it just didn't occur to him. For whatever reason, it didn't pop into his brain yeah. that it would be weird. No. So, you know, is he like, and I, I do wonder like how he reacted. And I don't know if it says it in the story, but it, when she brought up like, hey, I felt violated. Like, I'm I'm letting you know that this was a violation. I do wonder how he reacted to that. If he said, oh, fuck, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I was trying to be cute, but I fucked up. Or if he denied it and he was like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm still doing the right thing. Yeah, based on kind of how, you know, she says they were, they kind of flipped it on her and said, um, I lashed out even more, demanded they get rid of it, but they just kept arguing, calling me controlling. That's stupid. And then basically kind of like flipping it on her, saying it was an overreaction and that 
she had just ruined his family's joy. It's weird. Yeah, for me, it's not as this is not as much about what happened. It's about the handling of of what's happening now. It's the communication between the two, which is the big like relationship flag. Yeah. But beyond that, it's bringing up this. Uh, I remember when I first got my positive COVID test. Yeah. I was like, because I was the guy that never wanted to get it. Kind of the I am legend thing. And then when I have grandkids one day, it's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, what was your like? What was what was COVID like? And I'm like. I never got that, but so I had to cross this bridge when I got a positive test to where I had to realize that would not be the case. And so I, <laughs> I, I completely flipped to this perspective where I wanted to almost take my positive test and frame it. And then when I have those grandkids, they'll be like, oh, what was it like? I'll be like, I survived that shit. Look. Dude, I wonder if like in a museum, is there like a positive test for like the plague or something <laughs> yeah. like that? See? That would be kind of sick. Right. No, I, yeah. okay, I see where you're going. Like, so it's like, I, no, think about it, like hundred, like years and years and years from now in the future, like a positive COVID test, like that's like an artifact or right. something. Like it could be yeah. worth something to hand yeah. down to your kids. Oh my God. Well, did you see everyone was sharing their grandparents like polio vaccine cards when like, uh, when we started coming out with vaccine cards and people were like, they're going to like control us with the vaccine cards. Sure. And people were like, they already did this. Like my oh. grandpa had a polio vaccine card. Like we, we've been there. Mm. We did this. Mm. Hmm. Did he also the weird thing about the pregnancy test is how did okay so she pees on it yeah and then from that moment how does it wind up into his hands there must be a weird like he took it out of the trash oh did it say that he took it out of the trash yeah ah. hmm. he took that little thing out of the trash yeah. are we are we super surprised that some guy gave his what's it his mother in law yeah. Gave his mother-in-law. No, the, his the mom. His, his mom, mom the pregnancy test. Are we super shocked by this? Is this I'm that not. shocking? One of the tough things about doing this with the stories is that I wish I could ask for follow-up questions to these people because I want to know. I want to dive really deep into what this guy's relationship is like with yeah. his mom. Mm, yeah, that's, that's, I want. I wonder if this is the first. Is this the first conflict involving something with the mother-in-law, or is there a history of? Because maybe, you know, when he's talking about she's overreacting, or maybe her strong reaction, I don't, I don't know what happened before this that could have, this could, have, this could maybe have just been a little thing to her, but maybe there was things beforehand with the mother-in-law and he's going, she's going like, your relationship with your mom is creeping me out. True. I don't like it. I think you're onto something there. And I will say, I think there might be evidence to support that by the fact that he's 34 and has now been married three times. 34 oh. married three times. Third time's the charm. <laughs> like, yeah. I think we're dealing with a little bit of a mama's boy here mm -hmm. who has very unhealthy boundaries with his mother. Sure. And um, I think that might, the math is math in there. And, you know, that's, that's why he did all this. So overall vote on this one, not the asshole. The top comment with a lot of awards and 48,000 upvotes. I think I see why at 34, you're his third wife, not the asshole. Mm. And so the next one goes, I'm getting incubator vibes, which what does that mean? basically like, like they're so excited about the baby. Like she just looks at the wife, not as the oh, mother, as not as the mother of my grandchild, not as really my son's wife and partner. You're just the incubator that you're the, the means to the, what's that saying? It means to the end. Yeah, that one where it's just she's just an incubator. It's yeah. just her way of getting a grandbaby. Yeah, that's weird. All I've of his past of wives, those other two, they were infertile. You're just a little, little bun oven baker. I guess that is what her like primal brain would be thinking. Yeah. Next comment. Blessed to be the fruit. Blessed to be the fruit. What does that mean? Handmaid's Tale reference. I've never seen that. Oh, Same. God. It's, Wait, is that a book or a movie? or? It is a book game? by Margaret Atwood and has okay. now become a TV show where, oddly, hmm. the main actress is in Scientology, which is kind of like a, huh, that's ironic because it's about a cult that, like, hmm. harvests the, the fertile women hmm. and then breeds them to these men. It's oh, real, wow. real. Great, great show. Creepy as fuck. Feels really real. Feels like it could happen, like we're on the brink, but... It's just crazy. Crazy. Okay. 
Up next for us, am I the asshole for not allowing my girlfriend to take dangerously hot showers? <laughs> <laughs> I've been dating my girlfriend for eight months. Things have been going so well that when she started a project based in my part of the city, she decided to stay at my place temporarily rather than do the daily commute. I noticed that when she showers, she has the water so hot that the steam billows from the bathroom when she opens the door. It leaves everything in the bathroom wet. I've been telling her to use the dehumidifier in the bathroom as she showers. She told me that she showers with the window open and turns it on afterwards because the air was too humid for the dehumidifier. I put my foot down and told her it wasn't optional, and she ended up breaking the dehumidifier with the steam. I told her that enough was enough, and that if there's no dehumidifier when she showers, then she's going to have to shower at a normal temperature like everyone else does. When she comes out of the bathroom, her skin is red. What she did instead was she started locking herself in the bathroom while the steam dissipated so I wouldn't catch her turning my bathroom into a fucking sauna. Is it sauna? That was a little Minnesota right there. How to finish versus English. This is what I need, guys. So in Finnish, this is said as sauna. Sauna. Wow. Okay. Okay. There we go. I'm still going to say sauna. Yeah, you're the only person in the entire U.S. that's going to say it that way. But it won't hopefully get me yelled at from my Finnish family, which is the most important part. Turns my bathroom into a fucking sauna. Well, last week I had enough of it. I took the lock off the bathroom door. The toilet is in a separate room, so there is still complete privacy when using the toilet, by the way. Now she can't steam out my entire bathroom without me knowing. I knock before entering and make sure it's not too steamy in the bathroom and that the temperature of the water is normal. She hasn't said anything about it, but since I did that, her mood has been low with me. She started spending weekends at her place, and she's slowly been taking her stuff with her. I told her that I didn't do it to be nasty, but the hot showers were damaging my bathroom, and probably her health, too. She just says, okay, and it's fine. Am I the asshole? Hmm. Is, well, he's juggling two different intentions. There's the one where he's saying like, and I'm trying to figure out which one is the more important one to him because there's the yeah. thing of uh, she's damaging my bathroom, but then there's also the thing of uh, she's damaging her health. With the damaging her health thing, to what degree? It's like if you have a partner who is making whatever bad decision for their health. It's like you, you do what you can to uh, you know uh, encourage them to make better decisions for yourself for themselves. But at the end of the day. You only have so much control over other people's lives and choices. Yeah. And you have to accept that. But as far as his bathroom, that's his motherfucking bathroom. I know. You know she's got to respect his, his, his bathroom as much as he's got to respect her choices. That's her, that is his security deposit on the line. Yeah. Yeah. The only time this would start to bother me, I guess, is like, well, I mean, you got to use waterproof paint in your bathroom. I think that's like pretty clear yeah but besides mold, that like mold like if there was to starting to be black mold morgan has this habit of showering in this exact same fashion but i've never once worried about her health what is it going to do to you nothing i Just like to go in the hot little. tub at 106 i would turn up higher if i could um this i don't know what this is going to do to you dehydrate you make your i don't know i'm sure the saunas are hotter like an actual sauna gets so hot i just that's throwing me off the whole sauna thing but sauna um i sure it i no you're the asshole i will go with it i will say it is extremely controlling to like take the lock off the bathroom door and then like like he's the shower police he's like knocking and then what's the water temperature at I can't trust you to shower on your own. Like, it's What's like it really he's treating her like it's, a toddler. Yeah, it's, well, that's the th- that I'm trying to reckon with two things here is that you can't control her decisions. Is that what's the thing? Is it your? Is it her health or is it that she's fucking up your shower? Because if yeah. it's her health, like, like I said, you can only do so much to control other people. But uh, if it's he, he's genuinely concerned about his security deposit, that's what I would want to figure out from this guy. Is what's what's actually bothering you? Yeah. So his bathroom doesn't have a fan. 
It doesn't sound like it. I hate bathrooms that don't have fans. Why is that even a thing? It is interesting, but some don't have the ducts to hold a fan. But there is ductless fans because we have one at my farmhouse. So I know that that's a thing. So the top comment on this one, you're the asshole. Bathrooms with showers should be able to handle steam. If it can't, that's a facility problem, not your girlfriend's for now problem. Seriously, though, get a window fan and let the woman boil herself alive. And so someone else goes, for real, while I've damaged all my bathroom furniture with my penchant for boiling myself alive, my bathroom itself is fine. I literally boil three pots of water to put in my tub because my hot water heater doesn't get hot enough. I cut it with cold water until it's cool enough to tolerate, but it's still dangerously hot. It generates a lot of steam with the window open in the winter. High heat and steam help my migraines tremendously, though. And so someone else is like kind of being a Debbie Downer and goes, causes a lot of mold and mildew cleanup in the long run. I think, look, that's a legitimate position to take, you know, if it does cause a lot of mold and mildew. Yeah. I, that's why I, I, I'm sorry I keep coming back to this, but I don't, if this guy is legitimately concerned about his shower uh, gathering mold and mildew. But he's, pro if I had to make my guess, and I don't like to do this with people because I don't know, I wish I could talk to the guy and get it out of him, but he, he might be more concerned with the control. So we do have some comments that might highlight things for you. Please. Uh, so someone commented, you're the asshole. Absolutely. Are you this controlling in every other aspect of your relationship? Yes. And so OP goes, no, just the aspects that damage my property. Okay. Someone replies, the bathroom getting humid and wet isn't damaging it any more than anything else. That's literally what the room is designed for. As long as you let it air out afterwards, it's fine. Normal wear and tear from years of showers is going to happen regardless, so you can't stop it. And OP goes, oh, wow, thank you for that incredible advice. I didn't realize that the drywall coming off the walls in pieces in the last three weeks didn't start because that was the time my ex moved in and started having scalding hot showers with no dehumidifier twice a day. It's because of 10 years of wear and tear that are suddenly becoming apparent now. What would the world do without a little know-it-all like you? Man, everyone on the internet is so angry all the time. <laughs> <laughs> everyone oh, writing the off. post, commenting on the post. Oh my God. And so the next comment, X, eh? So she did break up with you. Good on her. Boom. Yeah. I mean, you knew that the minute she started taking small batches of her shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, so she, so that's, it ended with him them breaking up. They're done. Okay. That sounds like it worked out for everyone. Yeah, it does. He, she no longer t is damaging his uh, bathroom, and she can take all the hot showers she wants. Yeah. Sometimes it's a good thing when people, when just relationships don't work out. I know it's yeah. a blessing in disguise. Why did you break up? up? Oh, you know she was taking too hot of showers. Very petty reason. Yeah. If like that was it for them, like just the shower thing, but I mean, it does sound like this was like quite the problem, which would lead me to believe that they didn't use the proper paint because. The walls around the shower are currently flaking off in chunks. Yep. I've lived here three months before she moved in, and it's only been a problem since she's been here. And then just like OP commented a shit ton. I care because the plaster in the bathroom is damp and literally peeling off the walls. You know, I don't respect anyone who like tries to like form a relationship of any kind. You know, yeah. it's hard. You have your own like everyone has their own like weird stuff and mm -hmm. You know, when you yeah. try to invite someone else into your life and get along with them, it's a big attempt. I respect you guys for doing it. Yeah, three you and know? a half years. That's pretty good. It's working out. Not bad. No, it's not bad. And people, I got asked the other day, I was like, what's your biggest fight? And I'm like, I don't know. Honestly, we haven't had too many, just like probably me meltdowns. Like one time I shattered my phone on the street when I was really mm -hmm. drunk. And that felt like the world was ending. Mm -hmm. That wasn't a fight, though. No, no, no. I, that's why I said me, my meltdowns. Yeah. I have meltdowns sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> you know, all of these on my the asshole posts, they all involve like relationships with other people. Yeah. And it's, you ever go to r slash forever alone? No, but it's on my list now. Wildly. Why, if you ever like are depressed, go to r slash forever alone. You'll feel way better about your life. Oh and it's interesting gosh. to go. It's interesting. You go to this subreddit. Yeah. And you're like, I, I invite other people into my life. I attempt to have relationships with other human beings. Here's the conflict that I'm experiencing as a result of that. And then you go to forever alone and you go, I have isolated myself. I have no 
conf- interaction with other people and therefore no conflict, but I have severe loneliness. Aww. And you go, whatever, well, it, you, whatever you decide to do, whether you want to be alone or whether you want to be with other people, there's conflict involved. There's no easy way through this thing called life. Yeah. It, it is work. Relationships, relationships are fucking work. Communication is hard as shit. Like even my mom, love her to pieces, but she surprised me the other day. She did me a favor. I sent her to a brewery to go get me and Justin beer. Apparently in Minnesota, you can't buy beer on Sundays after 6 p.m. And so she went down there for nothing. And she she went to the store next across the street from this in this little craft district. And she bought, you know, $45 worth of ice cream. Really? And I just didn't know. And so I, I you know, I looked at my credit card and I was like, I go, what? You bought $45 worth of ice cream? Like, why didn't you tell me? And it was a nice gesture, but mm-hmm. I just would have liked the communication. And we just, you know, it just it was a surprise that I wasn't expecting. You ever eaten $45 of ice cream in a day? No, but it sounds like an exhilarating experience. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we need to try it. Man, you guys you guys should do a Forever Alone episode. It's, uh, Are you going to come back for it? I would love to. Okay. But I will. the stories are going to be way less cute. Oh, God. They'll be... I you know, it's depressing. So I have an episode right now I'm building. It's called Dark. Okay, what is it? Just dark stories. Like like how, stories. How dark, how dark are we talking? Like really, really dark. Mm. Like, like heavy dark. Okay. Moving away from Am I the Asshole, today I fucked up by passing gas while wearing a butt plug, then screaming at my boss. So recently, my partner, 32 male, and I, 27 female, started experimenting with anal play. Nothing too crazy. I purchased some anal training butt plugs that are smaller sizes and meant to help you work up to actually wearing a plug. They come in three sizes and are made of a soft silicone. The idea is to get your muscles used to relaxing enough to let objects inside. I started small, of course, with no issue and moved up to the second size rather recently. I was chatting with my partner and he suggested some kink adjacent activities like wearing my plug in public. I was thrilled with the idea and got on board right away. I'm dumb and thought wearing it to work would be a good plan. So yesterday morning, I got all lubed up, slipped in my tier two plug and finished getting ready for work. Driving to work, I had no issue as the tier two was quite comfortable. Let's just say... I got pretty busy at work and completely forgot I was plugged. So about two hours goes by. I'm sitting at my desk and I felt my tummy rumble in that familiar way. So I discreetly tried to pass gas as one does. A small push didn't release the pent up pressure. No problem. I looked around to see if anyone else was in my office and discovered I was alone. So I figured, why not rip a big one? I learned the lesson that pushing out a big toot while plugged will launch said plug Uh. into your underpants, (laughs) causing you to panic, thinking you just shit your pants. (laughs) Then you'll get up from your desk chair to quickly stumble a little, then fall right as your boss walks in. Then as he rushes to help you up, you'll scream, don't come any closer, trying to spare him from the sight of you thinking you shit your pants when, in actuality, you just pushed your plug out. Then you'll have to run to the bathroom, mortified, still thinking you shit your pants, and screamed at your boss, only to realize it isn't nearly as bad as you thought, and you had a huge overreaction. I definitely was relieved there was no accident, but I couldn't leave the bathroom for 10 minutes out of sheer embarrassment. Needless to say, I will never be wearing a plug in public again. If you're my boss, please know I am so sorry for a very confusing Tuesday morning. I don't understand. Have you guys ever used a butt plug? Yeah. Mm-mm. I don't understand it because of every other orifice, your ear, like when you get sick and your ears get stuffy and your nose gets stuffy, or like if someone's covering, very yeah. unpleasant experience. Yeah. I can't understand what, what pleasure is derived from plugging your ass. I understand, you know, People who like, you know, having things inserted into their asshole and stuff, but like just plugging it. Oh, no. I don't get why you would do that. Yeah. Long-term plug. I'm not sure. I'm a very gassy person as well. So 
I but don't if think you're gassy. Why? It just I, doesn't no, make I d- sense. I haven't used a long term plug. I have this little like bead that vibrates. Okay. It's just a little little guy. So I like that. I like using that like during sex and like sure. playing with if, stuff. If it vibrates, that makes sense to me. Yeah. But if it's just you just just a little right. plug, it yeah. make sense. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe the plug pushes on the G- like. If it's a guy, you know, the G spots in the prostate. So I've mm. just never thought of it in the context of okay, I'm gonna get in my car and drive to work and have this all day. You know what I'm saying? It was like a maybe a quick term- excursion. Yeah. Like oh, I'm gonna you know go out to the store and this might be fun, but to sit at work all day. It was too long of a commitment. That I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. Even like. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't want to walk around just like, like, I guess like if you're in the bedroom, like anything, but I wouldn't want to just walk around with something in my ass, just like going throughout my day. Yeah. But I, I, you know, this is, you know, everyone should feel free to do whatever they, they want, but I guess it just doesn't make sense for me. So this person, they farted their butt plug out. Uh Uh-huh. I don't like the idea that I can't uh, go about my natural bodily functions because (laughs) they're my like... Like if you, it's in the right. same in the same way that you know, I wouldn't want my nose and my mouth plugged up if I were trying to breathe. I wouldn't yeah. want my ass plugged up if I were trying to fart. Yeah, right. that's the thing. I think it's it's very inconvenient. So the issue is the fact of how she responded to the boss wanting to care for her. No issues here. I think just well, yeah, that that's where the problem really. If there is, is one, is like yeah. the reaction to that, which in a in a panic situation when I guess you think you've shot yourself you would tend to react poorly to people. You know, the last thing you want is someone coming up to you and helping you or yeah. whatever. So people act differently out of extreme embarrassment or panic. Does Now I wonder what this uh, woman, does she have a relationship with her boss that is, I don't know what she does for a living or sort of what the work environment is like, but does she potentially have a relationship with her boss where she could just be like, listen, man, I had a butt plug in. Just now, and because it looks, if I if I if I like have employees or whatever, and my employee was like, I have butt plug in. I'm like, I don't. Dude, as long as you get done whatever I hired you to yeah, do, I'm, I'm I'm the same. Yeah, I'm the same. Well, yeah, but but from knowing what I know of both of you, you're very open people. Yeah, there. And again, from being on on this show and reading these stories, and from the stories you get, we talk about a lot. There's not a ton out there that really surprises you. Sure, you're not like, oh my god, what. But if but this guy's start, a CPA. When you start to no. think about other people, <laughs> think of people your parents' age or just I, out there. Most people, when you tell them that, wouldn't just be like, oh yeah, you know, you be you. They'd be like, yeah. you're doing what? You, 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 yeah. like, you're fired. I mean, isn't it awesome to like fucking have like a podcast right? and that's <laughs> like, you don't have to give a fuck about anyone you know, knowing all this shit. So I, I, I do, I do sometimes lose the perspective of <laughs> yeah. people, you know, as you're saying, my parents age who right. are not just like hearing people talk about butt plugs and sex and all this crazy shit all the time. Yeah. So I, you're, 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 you're right to think of it in that perspective. Yeah. So if that were your boss now and you know that your boss, you know, wouldn't react so openly, what's your strategy here? Well, Get a new job. <laughs> run. We do have an edit. Okay. OP goes, I did apologize to my boss for screaming at him and made an excuse about tummy issues. He was super chill and brushed it off like it was no big deal. Thank God I didn't have to deal with my plug actually falling out of my pants. That's not something I considered. I I, I don't have a lot of experience with butt plugs, so I'm not having trouble sort of wrapping my head around the anatomy of the situation. Um, she does give pictures of the ones she purchased. Really? Can we yes. see? Yeah. That looks fucking huge. We we need like that a quarter. Huge. We need a quarter next to it. She was though. only on the size two though. I think it's that's that no, size two looks huge. No, go go to the sizes. There's definitely some dimensions here. Sizes vary from 0.75 to 1.25 inches to, wide. That's Holy wide though. Fuck, the widest is 4.75 inches long. No, long that's long. Or wide. That's oh, long. Oh, oh, okay, okay. But Jesus but five inches up up your ass, so that's pretty long. Five. But I was right? I was thinking about the width. One point twenty five inches. Why? A lot. Buttholes are tiny, man. That, well, and it depends on how tight your anal sphincter is too. Like some people's don't stretch that far. You know what? This woman. Um. You know, she seems like. Are you kind of impressed now? Yeah, I am impressed. I I, I think she should get a raise. <laughs> I don't know what she does, but she should get a raise. <laughs> 
I agree. Yeah. I don't think she fucked up at all. I no. think she took a chance. And I think the, the her experience in taking a chance was rocky along the way, but I think she learned something, and I think that uh, she will come back stronger. Oh, yeah. I don't think there's any negatives here. I think at the you end know. of the day, falls out. It didn't fall out onto the floor. Positive. Make the perfect stomach excuse to the boss. Easy. Apologize, move on. Positive. Here we are. Yeah. It's a very happy ending as far as these stories go, usually. This, this stuff is tough. You know, when people call my show and they talk about relationships, um, uh, it's really hard because I don't, you know, I mean, with these, you can't even talk to them. You're just like sort of reading what they've presented. And it's yeah. like, it's hard to, because when someone's like, you know, I've been married to this person for 10 years. And it's like, okay, now you have to sum up like, you know, I have to make a decision about your 10 year long relationship using the like paragraph of information yeah. right. you have here. And it's like, who the fuck am I? Even if it's the most horrible paragraph, it's like, who the fuck am I to be like, you know, with their having been 10 years of existing context to ignore that and go, you guys should break up. That's crazy. Do you ever get like stuck on the fact you're only talking to one side too? You're like, what's yeah, the other dude, side? I, I'm sure you guys have talked about this on here all the time. Yeah. But, like, with these, Cause with these posts, like you're reading it from their perspective. Mm hmm. And you, that's the only perspective you really get. Right. But it's hard when you don't, when you only get to hear one side. Yeah. Cause you're like, how accurate is this side? Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's writing it to make, everyone's writing it with the, everyone wants the not an asshole votes. Yeah. That is true. Okay. Well, let's see on the next one if you think there even needs to be another side. Am I the asshole for laughing at my grandpa after he told me to, quote, cover up my feet? So this one is fairly recent, and he's still mad at me, so I decided to voice this story in hopes of getting corrected if I'm wrong or something. So this morning, my grandparents informed me that some people would be coming over to set up a new bed frame, etc. Since I wasn't needed, I just sat down on the sofa and minded my business. I asked if I should help, but I wasn't needed. For context, I was wearing a normal t-shirt and some leggings, but no socks. This will be important for later. However... During the visit, my grandfather kept furiously pointing upstairs. Apparently, he didn't want to tell me what I needed to do, but expected me to magically know. After looking at everyone wearing masks, I assumed he wanted me to wear one. I was pretty far away from everyone, so I didn't think it was necessary. So, after I got up and put it on, he seemed even more furious. I kept asking him what he wanted me to do, but he refused to speak. After the guy and the girl finished building the new bed frame and left, we sat down and talked a bit about the new bed, what happened, etc. That's when I mentioned being confused at what he wanted me to do, and he promptly told me that it was vulgar for me to display my feet the way I did. Mm. Faced with the absurdity of the situation, I laughed, imagining how the two builders would say, Oh my God, look at how hot this girl is because of her feet. My grandmother then joined in laughing with me about my, quote, seductive feet with the power to make any man horny. My grandfather, however, exploded, saying that it was indecent and disrespectful to be at home without socks in front of strange men. Mm. He's currently still mad at me for showing off my glorious feet in front of strangers. So am I the asshole for laughing at my grandpa for him telling me to cover up my indecent feet? I mean, this guy, he's from a different time. He has his own views about fucking all this shit that I don't know if they're going to change before he dies. You kind of look at him and you go, listen, this is how you are. This is what you think. Whatever. You're ridiculous. I'm going to laugh at you. <laughs> but I'm not going to. There's no changing. I don't know. What Do you do you think that when you're however old that guy is and you have these weird views about, you know, women and their feet and shit, like, is he ever going to change? No, I think grandpa's got a little bit of a foot fetish. So. That's also totally, which totally is, in the cards. Right. <laughs> and which is interesting, though, because I feel like in the last in maybe our generation or, you know, the next, that's when this stuff is really like it's, you know, it's in the limelight, which I don't feel like you hear about grandparents talking about fetishes like that. No, I, I think it's more in the we we openly talk about it now and almost embrace it. The yeah. Sexual revolution. I just would never expect a grandparent to either kind of reveal that. 
I asked or, my grandma. Or be so sensitive to it that you're like, those guys who are here in our house are definitely looking at her and that's making me uncomfortable because her feet are exposed. But he's probably turned on by her feet. So in his head, he's like, God, her feet look good. That's why he was- Oh, he so was that's getting, how he's compensating with it? Yeah, he was like, he was so aroused, I think, that yeah. he couldn't even talk. He just kept uh, uh, pointing up the stairs. Like, he couldn't even talk. He was so flustered by her feet. Maybe he's, got, he's probably got like a weird control thing, maybe. I, there's he just a likes to like boss around his, his granddaughter and shit. Potential, It's a yeah. weird thing. I like that his grandma is, the grandma's cool. The grandma gets it. The yeah. grandma's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, she she lied because he's been telling her to cover up her feet for 70 years. Or he's not attracted to her feet and they just don't do it for him. Oh my God. Can you imagine? J Justin's got a friend who's, he's got a big foot fetish. Is your friend buying pictures from your friends? No. No, no, he's. I don't, I don't think he's on that level. No, but I have thought about that when I'm at your house without socks. I I have wondered, what does what does he think about my feet? Because <laughs> I have been told I have cute feet. I don't. <laughs> I mean, do you think he draws a boundary? I think so. He can and compartmentalize it, my I, feet versus feet he likes. Yes, mm. and I think if it were someone that is like off limits in that sense as like a granddaughter. The feet just don't, of those people, it doesn't would, do it Even if they were the most perfect feet in the world, you you just- It's you, unnatural. Yeah, you wouldn't. Or it's like, I don't know. This I, grandpa- I'm just surprised that he's like, would even reveal that because then it does give that red flag of like, wait, is it because you are the one? Not because these guys are, but like, why even open that door? Yeah. Is this is the first time she hasn't had socks on in this house? Yeah, it is. It, it, this couldn't possibly have been the first time this has come up. And so why was it this time that was so specific and so different? Maybe she's at a different age. Mm. Like, uh, may, like, for someone that has a foot fetish, you have this idea in your head, okay, that's a kid. I can't look at their feet. Like, you know, that's more pedophilia versus foot fetish. So, you know, you have these age guidelines or whatever. Mm. Maybe she's crossed over the bridge of like. So he, so we, he's yeah. like, okay, she, he's, she's a kid. I won't look at her feet. But the fact that she's his granddaughter Isn't. is not as much of a boundary for him. Or it's just the fact that he has a really strong foot fetish and he just doesn't want anyone to see them because he thinks everyone thinks the way he does or something. Hmm. Oh, I got to hear the comments on this one. <laughs> I'm just, I like, I, I don't know. This is just so crazy. So the top comment with 8,000 upvotes was now, you know, your grandpa has a foot fetish. Yep. Next one. Haha, <laughs> for real. That's what I was thinking the whole time. Please only buy your grandpa foot themed items from now on. Um, and so someone goes, we haven't ruled out the option of grandpa being so enamored by OP's feet that he was overtaken by emotion and couldn't speak. And I will say, I did not read the comments before this one. Right, you did. You were. You did mention that. I was. I. I. My mind just goes down rabbit holes. Like I go to very dark places sometimes in my head. Are, do you often make like an assumption about the thing, and and then you see that a bunch of people in the comments oh, were yeah. making the same assumption? Yeah, and it's really satisfying because you're like, I was on. You're something. right. Yes. I feel like Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. So we do have some. <laughs> we have some updates. Update. Why is everyone suggesting my grandfather has a foot fetish? If that's true, I'll start wearing socks forever. Oh my god. Update two, all caps. Why are so many suggestions of you telling me to make an OnlyFans account for my feet pics? Oh my God. Update three, out of sheer curiosity, should I open up my OnlyFans account? Last update. So I have decided against doing one since I don't really know many ways around cybersecurity and everything, but to answer a few general questions. One, my entire family is from Germany and we have a pretty lax view on how to dress mostly just dressing appropriately. Two, my family isn't religious, with me being atheist and my grandma being agnostic, for example. Three, yes, my dad has that fetish. I stumbled upon his <laughs> <She> Instagram. <laughs> ah, I stumbled upon his Instagram and he was pretty open about it. Huh, he was open about it? What the fuck does that mean? He was open about it on Instagram. What's he posting? What is he posting? What's he posting? 
I have more questions now than I did before the updates. I feel bad for this girl that she posts this story and then a bunch of people are telling her like, yeah, your grandfather is attracted to you. Yeah. Have Have you ever had this inclination at all? Have you ever f- seen feet and thought, oh, that's hot? No. Yeah, so that's <laughs> that's kind of where I'm at. Like, we can all say, yes, there's definitely better looking feet and then like gross feet. Like anyone can make that assu- like that determination, like well kept yeah. yeah, feet versus I don't, not. But I, I don't make that ju- I don't make that judgment sexually. I'm it, just right, like I right. make that judgment aesthetically. Exactly. Yeah. And so I I don't I've never and I know. Can we phone a friend? And I'm well. I'm not saying it's just. <laughs> <do that. laughs> I just I, I've, I've never have, but I think we need to call Jake and ask him. Oh, uh, is he a foot fetish guy? Yeah. Oh. He would be very open about it. We should ask. Like, what about the feet? Does it? I honestly don't know if he would. You don't think so? No, I. Any time, but that you know that question in relation to anything. What about the feet? Does it like? Is it? Yeah. Is it even an explainable? Well, I'm thing, sure like it any is. sexual attraction or fetish or anything like. I feel like you could. I'm sure. It, I'm sure it definitely is, and I'm not like. I know there's a bunch of fetishes for all sorts of things, but I was just curious because I've never ever felt that way. I've never so, associated it that way. Well, you like boobs though. So like, what about like well, who how- Who doesn't it, like boobs? Some people don't like boobs. Everybody loves boobs. Do you like boobs? I, I do like boobs, but yeah. I don't think everybody <laughs> likes boobs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so like, explaining like what, like boobs are just like little pockets of fat with nipples on the end. Like what does it for you about boobs? I guess. I guess you wouldn't be able to explain it. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what I guess. Yeah. It's just yeah. like a thing. It do you, just guys, is do you guys have is. any uh, fetishes? Not anything exciting. No, I wish I could answer that with like, yeah, I love to something. <laughs> but I. Do you want to share yours? It's pretty. It's pretty PG. Me? Yeah. <laughs> 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 He's like, oh, I, you're like, you didn't know that whatever the thing is was a fetish. No, yours. The one you have with the the things. Oh well, sometimes like you know, in the like in the sense <laughs> of lingerie, you know, when you have like tall socks or tall lingerie sure. that comes like up garters that's what they're called yeah right? like i can think that's attractive but it's not like a i don't know if that's a fetish it's not like oh my god i'm gonna look at that and like i'm like like it's game time it's just mm-hmm. it's it's not like a. I feel like sometimes fetishes are kind of um taboo well like that ne- wouldn't necessarily make the experience that much more intense for me than not. Uh, Whereas, like, I think with certain fetishes, it's like, oh, like, I need it to be this certain way. Yeah. And this person we're speaking of would not date someone mm-hmm. and therefore never marry someone that doesn't have, in their eyes, great, perfect feet. It is, like, one of the first things he will determine about a girl. Like, he's potentially going to even go on a date with or like be serious or know, like, you know, hook up with. It's good to have well-defined standards for what you look for in life. Yeah. For sure. I don't have any that I like that come to mind. I need to like go through a list of fetishes and maybe one that like I didn't know I like is on there, but yeah, we're pretty boring. We're pretty vanilla these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we're getting to that, like, you know, that you missionary know, married life. All kinda, time. You know, just the, just kind of going through the motions. Did you think when I asked you <laughs> to come on this show, you're going to just hear about. No, I'm sex. pleasantly surprised. I don't know if it's a thing with like podcast, but I think that like <sighs> people who have podcasts, maybe they're just more open about talking about stuff. Yeah. Well, since I quit my job, I've definitely become more open because I, I was scared. I was so scared when I was still working as an OT. Dude. That the people at the hospital were going to find my stuff. It's the most freeing. Th- like when I hear people be like, "Oh, I'm like gonna like get become a lawyer. I can't like talk about stuff. Or, like I'm afraid about like what I post on Facebook and yeah. how they right. to me." I'm like, "God, what a horrible way to live your life." It is so strange just being able to like just put whatever out there. It's amazing. It's the best thing ever. It's to crazy. not be like, "Oh my, t- I'm not gonna get into college if they know that I like anal or yeah. something like that." <laughs> It's such a bad way of living. I do just want to share before we move on from the foot one. Have you ever seen like so sex toys wise? There's like pocket pussies or fleshlights. Sure. Did you have you ever seen the ones that they make in the shapes of feet? Like that you could like fuck a foot. Mm-hmm. Are you about to show it to me? Yep. I'd love to see. Wait, it. wait, wait, no, no, no. Can I just describe this? 
So describe it first, and then I'll show. Is there a reason you're bringing this up? I just think it pertains to the story of like foot fetishes. Oh, you don't and- know. Okay, so <laughs> one time, this guy we've been talking about the whole time okay. had a birthday coming up. Anyway, he once had this birthday coming up, and uh, me and my music partner, the guy I've been talking about the whole time, uh, he wasn't a roommate with us at the time in New York. And we came up with this idea, and we're like, Jake, we got you the best. Well, I just said it again, but we got you the best, best birthday present. And we said her name (laughs) is Beth and Beth is going to have a great time with you on your birthday. So the whole time he thought we had like found this girl or something to to (laughs) be with him on his birthday. And we actually got this sex toy and it's like a pocket pussy, but it's, it's too like, it starts maybe from uh, a few inches above the ankle down and like then into like these rubber, I mean, you know, silicone feet. And they're kind of attached up by the toes and then in the heels. And then in each like leg section, I guess, is like holes, like a regular pocket pussy. But then they're literally just like feet. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's that. So on his birthday, we unveiled that's not for That's not for somebody with a foot fetish. That's for somebody who likes to kill people, chop them up. <laughs> And have sex with that's exactly their disembodied. It. That's what was in our apartment. That's what we named Beth. I'm sorry about any Beths out there, but we just came up with the most random name to try and trick him. But yeah, that lived in our apartment. <laughs> I like how one is a f- vagina and yeah. one is an asshole. There, this one, this one, this next one that was like scary, oh, like yeah, realistic. No. Yeah, it's for somebody like, who likes to fuck dead bodies. Like that. <laughs> look at the pedicure on that foot. Do you um? What, do you know what happened to this uh, Beth? Where 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 is she now? <laughs> Where's well, Beth now? Beth definitely made the migration to L. A. She's and, here. And okay, we so were, she was not immediately um, thrown away. I've seen it in person. I have. I did know about this. You I did at the old it. house, though. Yeah, we have since. We're in our in second your, house in L. A. Now. I was scared shitless. It was in Justin's closet, and this was like we had only been dating for. Not very long. Like this was moving out during COVID of June 2020, July 2020, somewhere around there. And we started officially dating in December of 2019. I like to say January 1st, 2020. Makes it easy in my head. But, right? 2019? Definitely not the first. January 1st, not January 1st. Yeah. But anyway. I don't know. I'm bad at math. So I like to keep things easy. I was cleaning out his closet to help him pack. And I found this bag with this foot in it no it was like in a sweater it was in a bag it was in like a pillowcase or something he wrapped it up in the sweater it's thing. definitely not something you want to put on display no no and so i was scared shitless that it was his and i put it in his room when we got back i was like do you do you want to tell me something i'm so glad you asked me though I was like, otherwise well, that was and you, and you went straight to to Reddit for relationship advice. I found this. Book. Yeah, is, right. I was surprised I didn't go to Reddit, but I was scared. I was like, what is this? And it's Beth. It's Jax. He put it in my room when his mom came to visit. This brought something up. Do you uh, do you guys ever like, you do you ever, even like before the podcast when you started, did you ever post on any of this stuff? Yeah. What'd you post? I didn't. I posted after. Not so much relationship advice. I um I turned to coin Reddit. Coin Reddit? Yeah, there's like a coin collector club and stuff. Oh, okay. And like okay, craft. so you post on like, okay, but not like dishing out like your personal life to the internet strangers. Most um, uploaded. I have some comments that have really made it up there. Nice. Trying to find someone to make a custom shirt. I had an idea for a shirt that I, I don't know how to sew, but I want it made. Mm-hmm. And then um, weird noise on 2021 Audi A4. The Boom. car the car was making weird noises. How many votes did that have? Um, my car oh yeah yeah. Mm. only four comments it didn't it didn't go far on the audi sub subreddit you want to know what it was yeah it was like a screwdriver just bouncing around in the trunk a whole ass (laughs) screwdriver yeah damn yeah yeah it was weird yeah have you ever posted personal stuff yeah i went uh most of my stuff is gecko stuff okay okay actually i have uh i think i have 45 years of gold or something like that Oh my god! It's from uh, all the all the give, you know, now Reddit gold, not redeemable 
for anything of actual monetary value. Which is so sad, isn't it? You worked so hard for that. You know, it's, I, I can sleep well at night knowing that my children will have Reddit goals. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Generational and, and wealth. Child, generational wealth, exactly. That's what we're building over here. I like it. So people don't like when I talk about poop, but poop story. So if it's not your vibe, skip. <laughs> I, 26 female, am anxious about moving in with my boyfriend, 29 male, because I take some really gnarly poops. Yes, you read that correctly. My boyfriend is an amazing guy that I've been seeing for over a year, and I'm really excited that he invited me to move in with him when my current lease is up at the end of April. The only problem is that I'm afraid he is going to regret his decision once he realizes that the lovely young woman he's welcomed into his one-bathroom condo takes poops that could put a truck driver to shame. Really, I wish I was joking, but I'm not. My poops are much more fragrant than the average person's. I've seen doctors, and fortunately, there's no medical issues that I can blame it on. It just seems that the combination of my diet, heavy in cruciferous veggies, spices, and cheese, my healthy appetite, I'm only 5'3", but I can out-eat my boyfriend, and most guys I know, And the fact that I rarely go more than once every other day, no matter how much fiber I try to consume, makes for some really, truly grotesque number twos. You do not want to go in there for a solid 30 minutes after I've been pooping, and no amount of Febreze is going to save you. Even courtesy flushes are mostly ineffective. Until now, I've successfully avoided introducing this delightful ability of mine to my current boyfriend or past boyfriends. It was just a matter of holding it in for a few hours or making an excuse to run down to the hotel lobby or out to Starbucks. But I know I'm not going to be able to do that every time. And besides, even if I tried, the local Starbucks would probably blacklist me once the employees realized the same lady was defiling their bathroom every other day. My current roommate is my best friend since college, so she's used to my horrific bathroom smells. I'll let her know when I'm about to drop bombs so she can use the bathroom first and she knows well to stay away afterward. That system works well for us, but I'm not sure how to broach the concept with my boyfriend who surely has no idea that his girlfriend is capable of olfactory war crimes. So help me out here, Redditors. If you're a toxic pooper or in a relationship with one, how did things work out when you started sharing a bathroom? Do I try to discuss this with him ahead of time so he knows what he's getting into or just let him experience the shock and awe the first time he enters after me and take it from there? Please help. I want to hear you guys first. Well, so (laughs) I, in New York, I lived in a very small apartment and I, you know, had a roommate. And so we found ways to deal with this quite effectively okay and so i get febreze you know eventually it just starts to smell like a febreze slash shit kind of smell combo yeah it doesn't Um, smell good and we used to take oh there used to be a lighter sitting in the bathroom and if you light a little piece of toilet paper and let that thing go for a minute and then right in the water covers instantly like you're pretty good i mean there's that but also there was this one time that I was taking too long in the bathroom and Jake oh really had to go. So he sat over the edge of the couch, put a Trader Joe's bag on the floor and just went for it. And that lit up the apartment like nothing I've ever smelled. So if she's in that boat, then yeah, it's rather hard to cover it up because he did take the bottle, the can of Febreze and ran around holding the button down for about a minute and a half. We both had to go to the park by our house for about a, an hour because we we were choking because the febreze was literally like giving us cancer oh my god so yeah i i I think there's ways to do it but if it's that bad i mean the water does a lot so like i don't know what's happening but (laughs) get some poopery or something on the front end i don't i don't see why she needs to cover it up i think if you're are they married did it say they've been together a year and a half a year and a half they're getting they're moving in together yeah well okay i mean this is a good litmus test yeah can he uh love her for everything she is including her massive poops I and agree. i think that this person she deserves somebody if she's gonna because when you get married to someone or you move in with them like it's a very heavy 
life decision and you deserve somebody who is um, down for all of you, even the unsavory parts, including your poops. Yeah. You know, I, if I were moving in, I'd take horrible nasty diarrhea poops too bad you didn't meet her well you know if i were moving in with somebody i would want them to be okay with that and maybe she has a weird because there's like a it's a a girl thing it's different but i think that's irrelevant you know if you're moving in with somebody you need to be prepared to see them as a true human being and a true human being is somebody who uh, takes violent shits and gets emotional and uh, excretes various fluids from their body and all the different <laughs> orifices, and and that's who he get he gets he <clears throat> gets to smell her poops because he loves her so much as, yeah. as exactly what she is, you know. If 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 he is the true uh, uh, person for her. So that's fine. And I, I let's say he fully understands it, gets to experience it multiple times. At some point, though, wouldn't you just like out of the courtesy for both of you want to find a way to not have to have that experience all the time? Like, sure, mm-hmm. you understand it. You're not going to leave her over it. You get you you get it. But it sounds like she's kind just, of exhausted everything, though. I mean, she went to a doctor over these poops. That's true. Did she's she say what the doctor said? Perfectly healthy. She's she's good. She said, fortunately, there's no medical issue that I can blame it on. Mm. So I I feel like my poops really, really smell. What's interesting about that paper trick works like a charm. I will light um, Q-tips on fire as well. Mm. I have a nice little jar in my bathroom full of Q-tips. Mm. And you just take the lighter and just pop one of those Q-tips and just but wave it around. But then I'm still banned. Yeah. So I'm very open with Justin where I, I will shut the door and I will say, you cannot go in there for, just don't go in there. Mm-hmm. Do not go in there. Because mine are stinky as well. I feel like no, does Nobody's anyone's shit smell good? Smell good? Yeah, right. No. <laughs> no. So it's just, you know, I want to know how much worse hers are than mine. But I feel like everyone stinks. So you just get over it. I wonder what her boyfriend's poops are like because he might yeah. be right. He might be on his computer right now writing a similar Reddit post. Yeah, and then they just have no idea that each other's poops smell that bad. It's weird though that they've been together. I mean, a year and a half. They must have spent a, a, a night or two together. I there's no way that she has not been pooping in a bathroom at the same in in a house that her boyfriend is also inhabiting. So I'm surprised that they've been together for that long. They're going to move in, and this has never come up. You can avoid it. I used to like go to the grocery store down the street or like she said, she goes to Starbucks. Really? Yeah. You shouldn't have, she shouldn't have to live there. She shouldn't have to go to Starbucks. <laughs> I, um, I don't like that. When we were in Copenhagen, oh, yeah. I would like send Justin down to the lobby and then we would like go out for the day to explore. I'd be mm-hmm. like, can you go down the lobby? Because I was so constipated there too. I didn't poop in Copenhagen mm-hmm. for like six days or like that second half of the trip. I had like four lattes in one day just trying to encourage my sphincter to work and nothing, nothing would sphincter. happen. You know how you kind of like people like the smell of their own farts a little bit? Yeah. I feel like if you're in a relationship <laughs> with someone, like eventually you're trying to get there. Can I ask you for some uh, relationship advice real quick? Yeah, sure. So we are, I mean, we're solidly at three and a half years over here. Yeah. And cool. uh, Morgan has this uh, this fear. And so she has currently to this moment has still not farted in front of me but you're lying you've heard it in my sleep for sure that's different we're talking about conscious so you You admit it you have so basically she has this fear and she will i guess hold it in until she is literally in pain and then like if i if i'm leaving and i forget my keys i'll come back she's like don't come in here because it's all now coming out because i have left by the end of this podcast, I want a Morgan <laughs> fart in that chair right there. Ah, Now's the time. I can't do it yet. I don't know. You you hear it in my sleep, but I literally, me and Lauren were talking about this the other day, and I will be like mid-dream, and I will jump scare myself awake with a fart. Like, I'll be just deep in a sleep, and then I'll wake up, and I'm like, I hope I didn't hear that. And then I like can't really fall back asleep because I'm so scared. Even in the bathroom, like, you know when you sit down... And for girls, like even if you're just going to pee or if you're a guy and you sit and pee, which you should, um, you kind of toot a little as you're peeing. You just, you relax and toots happen. Well, when I'm in public bathrooms, I have like, I'll make a big wad of toilet paper and just put it back there so I don't, no one hears my, my pee farts. What does that do? 
It just like the air softly escapes. You know, I know you said that your viewers, they, they're they uh, so they're polarized when it comes to poop calls, <laughs> yeah. but we're really discussing an essential part of life <laughs> yes. right now, and I think it's important. How Seriously. Long, how long do we spend on toilets? Do I don't know. Well, they, I'm sure there's very, uh, there's data statistician people who are tracking that and also going, how did I get this job? My average has gone down significantly because I used to have stomach issues, but I've oh, since you spent... figured them out. Is there an app for that that like tracks the amount of time you spend on the toilet? Uh, it's called TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> so to figure out how much time we spend pooping throughout our lives on average, there's a simple equation. One poop per day at 12 minutes each would be 4,380 minutes per year or 73 hours per year. Only seven. I feel like it's it got to, maybe for me, it's definitely more than 73 hours. Per Justin year. used to go in the bathroom and spend like 30 minutes there at minimum. There was no, some- no, 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 no. But I used to have my legs fall asleep for sure. And then I'd stand up and it'd be like, you're trying to walk, but you can't walk. You almost fall over. Yeah. Yeah. This statistic was before TikTok for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We do have an update. Oh, from her? Yeah. Please, let's hear it. So, if you didn't catch my original post a while back, here it is. In short, I've been worried about moving into my boyfriend's one bedroom because I take horrifically stinky poops, and I didn't know how to introduce him to that part of me. Let me start off by saying I really appreciate all the feedback. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to respond to individual comments or provide this update earlier, but I wanted to get back to you all, even if it's late. In case anyone out there was wondering whether our relationship was strong enough to withstand my face melting poo stink after all in all the advice i decided that i just had to put it out there rather than whistling past the sewage plant so to speak by trying to cover it up there were a few suggestions for stink minimization that i haven't tried before and still may but most of those roads i've been down before poopery it's only effective if your poop ends up fully submerged below the water which mine usually doesn't matches I've had one thought that was a clever solution until my roommate at the time asked me why it smelled like I was lighting my poop on fire. While I'm happy to do anything I can to put a dent in the stink, completely eliminating it is off the table. Anyways, about a week or so after my first post, I stayed the night at his place. The next morning, we made the usual coffee run, and it wasn't long before I felt a number two brewing. That's normally when I'd make some excuse to get back to my place but I decided that it was a good time as any to cross the thin brown line. Can I just, I want, no, I'll say it afterwards. Are you sure? The way that this woman writes so eloquently in so many different ways about her boobs, she's not like directly editing this on, but she has like pride in these shits. She's like, she's like making it sound like she's ashamed of it, but the, the, the subtext, Mm -hmm. she loves that her poops smell bad. Yeah, I think you she's can really in, tell. I think she's into it. <laughs> I told him, "Hey, I need to use the bathroom, and and honestly, if you have to go, you probably want to do it before me." He gave me a quizzical look and said, "Nah, I'm okay." So I went in there and proceeded with taking care of business. I'll spare y'all the gory details, but the result was characteristically catastrophic. Turning on. <laughs> You keep all these different poetic ways yes. of describing <laughs> gory, catastrophic face melting. Turning on the fan and prying open the tiny slit of the window was about as effective as combating the stench as your proverbial pinky finger over the end of a fire hose. I exited, fan still on, window still open, door shut behind me, and braced myself for some awkwardness. Feeling better, he asked. Oh, yeah, much better, I responded, wondering whether I should allude to the fact that his bathroom was now Chernobyl circa April 1986. (laughs) I decided not to. Just having gone at his place was enough progress for one day, right? Unfortunately, he didn't let me off the hook that easy. No more than five minutes after I had finished, he gets up and heads over to the bathroom. Um, you probably don't want to go in there right now, I said, with a mix of annoyance and palpable distress. He stopped and turned, huh? I had to poop. That's why I offered to let you go before me. He shrugged. Well, I didn't have to go then. It's fine. I know that girls poop too. 
He started back towards the door, and I got that feeling you get when you're watching a horror movie and the secondary character decides to take cover from a thunderstorm in the abandoned barn just down the road from the hospital for the criminally insane. He opened the door and began to enter, but then stopped cold and groaned, as if in physical pain. Ooh, babe, babe, he cried, turning around and pulling the door shut again, his face contorted into a grotesque mask of disgust. That's bad. I jumped off off the couch, fighting off tears and nervous laughter and shrieked, I know, that's why I tried to warn you. He smiled sheepishly and said, well, now I learned my lesson. Sensing my anguish, he came over and gave me a hug, and then he hit me with the anchorman quote, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. That got us both laughing, and gradually it dawned on me that I had cleared the hurdle and things were going to be okay. I told him about how this was something I'd been anxious about and even showed him my original post. He thought the post was hilarious and assured me that he was still 100% on board with our relationship and us living together even if it means keeping a pair of nose plugs handy. I'm happy to say I'll be moving in next weekend, just as originally planned. So thanks, Reddit, for giving me the confidence to get through this. Then There you have it. See, that was beautiful because he did, it didn't end with him being like, I don't mind, it's fine, it's no big deal. It ended with him going, that's amazing. Right. Yeah. He actively was impressed, yeah. which is what she wanted because she's – not she again, she's not letting it on. She's letting it on with subtext, but she is so impressed with how – her farts create Chernobyl and melt yeah. faces and all that. And so she needed somebody who was as impressed with her shits as she was. Yeah. And I'm glad yeah. that that's how it ended. She's a poop poet. She really is a poop poet. Yeah. yeah. Just beautiful writing. Do you think she wrote that on the toilet? I wonder. That's a good chance. Yeah. Solid. Because it sounds like it was it was written in a very fresh memory. Yes, exactly. Mm. Yeah. Mm. The top comment on the update. You ain't using socks or the poop knife, so you have nothing to worry about. That is true. Can we real quick the poop knife? What's yeah. the what's the short and simple of it? Um, so it was a story. It was like today I fucked up by learning not every family has a poop knife. Uh. And this guy went over to his buddy's house, took a massive shit that covered the the whole hole of the toilet, like a bridge. No matter how many times he flushed, won't go down. So he goes out and asks his buddy, Hey, do you have a poop knife? And so it turns out his family had this knife they hung up in their laundry room, and the whole family used it to cut their big poops. It's genetic. Yeah. Have you guys ever done that, like cut one of your poops? No, but I do want to try it now. With that knife? No, I think I need to order a, a, a second one. A fresh one. one. Yeah. I've used the one right there on the desk. Get out of here. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, was, I was literally about to get up and throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> Moving away from poop. Okay. Okay, let's do it. Last one for you. Please. Am I the asshole for yelling at my wife in front of my family for putting salt in my mom's birthday cake? So my wife, 24, is the main cook in the apartment. She cooks whenever we have guests over and for ages. My mom has been complaining about my wife not adding enough salt in her meals. My wife would take it personally and start a fight over this small comment my mom makes. Anyways, my wife and I hosted dinner weeks ago and mom made the same comment about my wife not using enough salt, even though my wife swore she did and said she was careful with salt, but my mom still insisted the food was tasteless. Now, the family were divided on this, so we couldn't really decide if my wife really did use enough salt. My wife started crying after they left, saying my mom was being deliberate with this salt remark to make her look like a bad cook, but I told her it's not true and she needed to let it go, and she did. Hours later, she forgot about it completely. For my mom's birthday, my wife offered to make the birthday cake, saying she found a really great recipe on a cooking blog. Mom wasn't excited for the idea, but I told my wife to do it thinking it would be a nice gesture to help them get past their conflict. We went to my mom's house and brought the cake. During the party, my wife insisted my mom be the first to taste the cake. Mom grabbed a piece, and once she put it in her mouth, she immediately got it out while spitting onto the plate. We freaked out and got her some water while she was yelling that there was salt in the cake. I looked at my wife and she said she had no idea what my mom was talking about. I immediately went to get a piece and taste some and found it was full of salt. 
It tasted horribly, absolutely horrible. Still, my wife acted confused, but I told her how fucked up it was for her to put salt in the cake. She said that since mom was obsessed with salt, then she figured she'd prefer it over sugar in her birthday cake. I was flabbergasted. I blew up and berated her in front of my family till she took her bag and went home. My sister said it was all right that my wife was probably feeling frustrated and wanted to make a point to my mom. I went home and she refused to speak except to say that I hurt her by yelling at her and that I should have told my mom off when she kept making remarks about her cooking. But I told her she acted childishly and ruined the birthday party and made an unnecessary scene for no reason at all. Now she's acting like the wronged party, but I let her know she has to apologize to my mom. Am I the asshole? Well, see, this is where my rebellious side comes out. So like if there's something that sort of is a a big hobby for me or quote unquote defines me or is just a part of my personality, such as cooking, and someone constantly has an issue with it and they keep calling it out for unnecessary reasons, then my, my rebellious side comes out and yeah, I sort of want to be the spiteful person that does make the call to say, oh, now you taste the salt. Here you go. I'll make your cake for you. And then you don't really give a shit that you ruin the day. You're just proving this big blatant point, which in my experience tends to feel really great in the short term and <laughs> not so great in the long term. But Sometimes life calls for these types of, you know, decisions when someone just constantly she gives you it. shit. Okay. All right. So, so the, the grandma is complaining about the wife's cooking. Not and enough so, salt. Not enough salt. So the wife, to spite her, adds Puts way too real much salt. salt. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't even know. I don't I'm, even know if cake recipes have salt. So I think by the sounds of it. In the recipe, she replaced the sugar with salt, for salt. Like knowing full on that that was going to be a gross cake and that despite the mom. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of like doing things out of spite. <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, better than us. Uh, no, I mean, I'm just not. Uh, what's the point? What do you win? What do you how, win? How do you? What's, so what's the. So what's your, what's yeah. your strategy to change the situation then? Um. I guess communicate. This is boring, though. But I guess it would communicate. Hey, uh, I don't like that you're berating me. I feel disrespected by you. You know, have a conversation. You know, do you gotta make a cake with a bunch of salt in it? <laughs> Waste a bunch of food. Fuck up the bread. What What are you doing that for? How old is this woman? It's just that's. I guess I don't like Spike because what was what's she's twenty four years old. Okay, I mean, what's gained at the end of this situation? A mother in law that hates your guts. Even now more. the mother right. now because that's what I don't like about the Spike thing is now right. the mom hates her. Now there's just more conflict. Yeah, it was a decision that was. And I get and I'm, I don't want to disregard this woman's emotions because she's clearly very she's, offended. Yeah. by this by her mother in law. Her mother in law is being a jerk. Her mother-in-law has no. Her mother-in-law is also contributing heavily to this conflict. She's running her mouth when she shouldn't be, uh, you know, chastising the the wife about her cooking. But why? One person at some point in the impasse has to make a decision that will uh, de-escalate the. Uh, what's the What's the opposite of escalate? You said de- is de-escalate. De- is de-escalate. You had it. I felt like there was another word. No, yeah, you got no, it. I, I believe it Diffuse. is. Diffuse. Diffuse the conflict. There, there you go. The source. One person needs to be the bigger person and go, okay, well, I'm going to start taking steps to calm this down. And neither of them did that. And she made this cake out of spite. And now the, now the situation is worse Yeah. for everyone involved. Well, so that's why I don't like the decision. Well, and that's where being able to talk to them and ask them, yeah. have you tried this? Have you tried to talk to her about the problem? And then it just kept happening. So you resorted to this, right? That's where you wish you could ask them. Exactly. That's, if I were talking to her, I would be like, what have you had the conversation with her? Hey, you're hurting my feelings. But even if, they, even if she hadn't that? attempted, let's say that she hadn't attempted to take the, uh, the more respectable, bigger person route. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. In that case, my rebellious side <laughs> says, make the fucking cake, make it really disgusting, prove your point, and then, hey, 
yeah, she might hate you after for a, for a bit, but then you can go in and have the adult conversation and, and still patch it up. I guess, I guess, yeah, they're not now, they're not now beyond the adult. Yeah, so they can still have it, but you it's know, like, have the fun. <laughs> what's the point? Like, cause doing things out of spite, it like reinforces your negative emotion. Cause first of all, bake it, baking a cake. It's a whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a whole endeavor. And to do it so angrily. Because she's right. baking the cake the whole time. Be like, yeah, I'll fucking show you, fucking bitch, fucking show. <laughs> to have that <laughs> while the timer is going on, she's preheating, she's preheating the oven, fucking bitch. She's putting the sprinkles, <laughs> fucking bitch. Fuck. Like that's not a good yeah experience for right. for her. <laughs> it could have been a release though, like just a could have been like almost cathartic. Like yeah, it's fuck true. you, bitch. You're gonna you're gonna choke on this salt now. Bitch. Right, but then she's just like it's like. For lack of a better, it's a little, it's like masturbatory. It's like she's soaking in the negative emotions. Oh, I see. In, uh, and like, I'm not saying she's wrong or right or that like the, uh, what's her, the mom or I just like, it's not my favorite way of dealing yeah. with that emotion because it's just reinforcing it, making it worse. And then the mom's going to start being even more antagonistic. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's just from, not going to work out for anyone. Well, I think from, from, her perspective of making the cake, you think that it's going to prove your point once and for all. From the mom's perspective, I don't think it's ever received as you think it will be. No. I don't think the mom's like, oh. No, she's the victim now. The mom's yeah. like, oh, yes, this is because I've been calling you out on the salt. Of course, like, and yeah. you think that that's what your action's going to do. Never. But really, at the end of the day, it probably just makes you feel really good for a short, ter short term. And it forever <laughs> fuck shit up exactly it's yeah. just not it's not a step towards a diffusion of kai it's a step towards a, a strong heightening of the conflict right which how would you handle it I, i'd say hey can you stop being an asshole and about the <laughs> cooking please do you think it's a problem that the husband hasn't like kind of said hey mom enough about the salt yeah oh yeah he totally does learn how to use the shaker bitch yeah. Add your own salt. Yeah, I know. He, the husband, you should step in there and be like, hey, mom, can you yeah. stop yeah. chastising my girlfriend? No one needs to make cakes in this situation. <laughs> There's no <laughs> cakes that need to be. Just to have conversations. The weird, uh, you know, making of cakes to diffuse. It's just, there's too many elements. Just no. have she should conversations. have just bought her a salt block. I buy them for my horses. They love them. I feel like your that horses? has the same message. Yeah. Morgan, you have so many layers to you. <laughs> I'm really weird. Yeah, I have some horses. Where? In Minnesota. Oh, they're, okay. Yeah, they're soon not. Be here. You're going to no, they're they're look to, under the table. We're oh, trying to bring to one here. out here. How the fuck are you going to get a horse? Are you going to ride the horse all the way? No, he's going to fly in a plane, hopefully. The horse is going to fly in a plane? Well, they okay. Have, they have planes with stalls they yeah. go in it like a ups plane in their own box get the shit out of here yeah, yeah. box he's well, in really like a big stall box. yeah he's really old and has a brain tumor so he's gonna die soon so i'm trying to enjoy our life together the last little bit he's got so i can either put him in a semi truck to get him out here which he probably would die in that thing so i have to save up money to buy a plane ticket for him how much does a plane ticket for a horse i don't cost? really know yet and i don't really want to it's I think it's two thousand. I, I three thousand. I think yeah, somewhere. Man, could you imagine? You know how people are? They're like, oh, getting sat next to a crying baby or a, you know, <laughs> a, a, a larger person on a plane. Matt, you know, it's really suck if you sit down next to a horse. That would be an interesting experience. <laughs> Have you I ever would, had the huge I dog would be next so to you? Pumped. Actually, a dog? though, yeah, like a big ass dog. No, no, that oh, they seen, usually they put dogs in the cargo. They plane, right? well, it's. They, they don't used to let have you a do lot it of anymore, ESAs. but you used to bring on your big ass dog and it's like, it's a pony. It's not like a full horse size. So yeah, he's, there's he's a big ass dog that's not much smaller than this horse. So it probably has happened. Damn. I got the saddle right over, right over there. You is, can, oh, is that a saddle? Yeah, there's a saddle. You can ride him. You know what? Lately, I don't know why this has been coming up, but um, I've been reading a lot about people who have gotten into pretty serious injuries on horses. Don't tell me this. <laughs> I was just saying, that's why I don't, that's why I, I don't think I want to ride one. <laughs> that's bad juju. I've been close. Justin's gotten bucked a bit. You got bucked? And well, reared. When we would go up to the farm, those horses aren't ridden every day anymore. Yeah. They're ridden every few months when we go home. And they're mad. And they just want to eat. They don't want to be ridden anymore. They're not in that 
that mode anymore. So yeah, there's times where you're Big running man. across the field, full blast, full run. And all of a sudden you feel this motion, like you get like the ass is going up in the air and you're about to fly over the handlebars, like on a Jeez, bike. Man. And so then you have to like <laughs> figure out, hold on. And then the next thing, you know, you're on the next horse and they pop up. And so you lean forward and hold onto their neck. Like, Oh Jesus, don't fall on top of me. So yeah, there's, you know, there's moments, but it just comes with the territory. I don't, I don't, I don't fuck with, uh, like fucking with animals. Well, see, so do you want to go horseback riding? They do rides in the Hollywood Hills. We could all go. I'd be down. Those horses don't can I do, do, can I do that. it in my gecko costume. Uh, oh, we might all have to. You might be able to. <laughs> I feel like the tail will cause trouble. It sometime. could spook it. Yeah, it oh, could spook the yeah, horse. You don't want to get spooked. I've been like getting caught up in my tail all night. I'm like trying to like. <laughs> like you could shift. pin the tail up. You could, yeah, like the donkey pin the tail on the donkey, haha, <laughs> and you're on a horse. I like that. Yeah. I'd ride a donkey, not a, a horse. Donkeys feel like, uh, I feel like I could tame a donkey. Yeah. I feel like I'm a, a horse. I, like, I feel like I'm smarter than all donkeys. <laughs> but not, but a not horse. all horses. I feel they're, like they're really smart. The horses that are smarter than they me. They are smart. But it'll be good. This will be a good adventure for us. I like it. I a mean, team I'm outing. I'm down. Let's team bring outing. The poop knife. Horse shits don't need knives. They come off in like big pellets. It's really weird to be in the middle of a high five like that. Yeah, it was so a fun So I just had for to you? go for the quick two. That was good. That was yeah. good. Are you? Have you ever done the thing where you jump over the... Yeah. She used to compete. Oh, yeah. no shit. Yeah. I was a big time gamer. What do you do for fun now? Hi, guys. <laughs> this... No, I don't know. I don't have any. F I need to get back into my fun hobbies. I want to learn how to sew, and then I'm trying to bring my pony out here, and I, I've, I'm I'm dealing with a little burnout. I have, I have like infinite more. I can see you. You're like you're trying to end the podcast. So I have like infinite more <laughs> questions <laughs> for you guys. <laughs> the oh, computer well, closed. We can we can do. We'll do it afterward. We, we can do it later. Yeah. Well, no, we got some more wine. We'll shut this down. Bye, guys. But. First and foremost, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. This is, this is fun. Where can everyone find you? Because you, if you're going to listen to one podcast and any guests that I bring on, Lyle's is really good. And you get Thanks, man. weird people. What's the what's the story that like sticks out the most to you? Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, story that sticks out the most. Well, uh, the other day I got um, two, I had two callers on the line, Uh I had both of them happened to only have one, <gasps> one testicle. testicle. I saw yeah, that, and, and they had the. I'm sorry. So both of them only had uh, yeah. happened to have one testicle, and I put them together, and they just started vibing with each other because <laughs> neither of them had ever met another person that only has one testicle. Well, and one had the left testicle, and then the and other one had, one the, had right the right. One. So I suggested that they they get together and they sort of smush them together. <laughs> And see if it opens a portal to an alternate dimension. I feel like it could. It, there's only one way to find out. Are they going to do it? Oh, man. I never get follow-ups on these. <gasps> you need to have your your callers give you updates. Here's I, 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 I don't know why, but I'm very- Ignorance is bliss. I'm like adverse to follow-ups. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah, like if you call in- Like I actually have, I actually have a thing. Okay. And I, I don't talk about this, but I have a, a thing where like- I, on my system, if you call into the show and you get in and we talk, it blocks you from calling again for like six months. Wow. Huh. That's actually a good strategy because then you know you're not getting the same people calling every week. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. And it's not because yeah. I don't like those people. It's just because yeah, there's a lot no, of, right. you know, I want to keep talking. I want to make sure I get to everyone. Huh. That's, I can. yeah. Uh, the podcast is called Therapy Gecko. It's on every podcast app, whatever podcast app you are using to listen to this podcast. Uh, it is on so Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, all that stuff. Nice. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. If you don't have the attention span for podcasts, uh, Instagram, Lyle, the number four ever. Uh, or just search Therapy Gecko on Instagram. And if you see a profile picture of a big green guy, that's me. And uh, <laughs> those are the two there you can go to youtube.com slash lyle for youtube.com slash lyle forever um just uh, search therapy gecko on google and a bunch of shit will pop up It'll and pop up. you'll find me youtube is a good one i like your changing backgrounds thanks man the jail cell you got some good ones youtube.com slash lyle forever or if you just search therapy gecko on youtube uh, it'll pop up. It'll, it'll pop up. Oh. No, thank you very much for the kind words, Morgan. <laughs> I appreciate it. And thank you guys for having me on your show. This is awesome. This was so good. Until next time, guys. Until next time.
Oh, until next time. Bye, Bye, but I won't be here. (laughs) Not for six months at least. I'll come back later. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, guys.